Hello again, SPS TV. This is Ms. Glass, and I am a second grade teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary, and I am excited to be here today to learn and teach and grow with you. All right, normally we're in a classroom surrounded by our friends, your teacher's there, we're in school, but right now we're staying safe and healthy, so we're not doing that right now, but we're doing something else. So to get ready, I like to get my body ready. And to do that today, I'm gonna to teach you a special way to take some deep breaths, all right? This is something that I like to call diamond breathing because it makes me feel sparkly inside. All right, to diamond breathe, you're just gonna follow along with me and my voice. All right, start right down here at the bottom and you're gonna breathe in and then you're gonna hold that and then breathe out and then hold it there and then breathe in again and then hold it here and then let it out and then hold it again and one last time ready breathe in here hold it right there and let it out and hold it again Whew. I feel great and hopefully you do too and now you are ready to learn all right today you might need to have some imaginary partners, or maybe you have someone at home that can be your partner, or maybe a favorite stuffy. For me, I'm going to imagine that I have you right here in my classroom, and I'll be imagining that our whole time together. All right, so last time we were together, we read this fabulous book, Snails, and we learned all about snails from this book. I've been thinking a lot about snails, and I'm sure you have too. So last time we read, we talked about things called text features, right? So we talked about the table of contents. If you remember at the very beginning, it is right here, our table of contents. And we also talked about chapter titles, which is inside of the table of contents. And we added that to our text feature chart. So today we are going to learn something new about text features from the book, Snails. All right, so let's take a look. We're gonna dive back into our book about snails here, and we are going to go right here to this chapter. It is called Snail Trails. And you might remember this from last time we were together, but I'm just gonna reread it to remind you. Snail Trails. Snails move very slowly. They slide along trails of slimy mucus. And last time we learned that mucus is thick, gooey liquid. So, if you notice, when you look at this book right here, you'll notice that there is a photograph on this page right here. And lots of expository nonfiction books have photographs in them. And that's different than maybe other stories that don't have, that aren't nonfiction expository texts, that they might have drawings or pictures or things like that. But instead right here, um, we've got photographs and photographs can give us lots of details that sometimes drawings and pictures um, like that can't give us. So this has photographs in here. So I'd like you to take a look at this photograph and what I read, and I want you to think, what can you learn from just looking at the photograph? So take a moment just to look. What can you learn about snails just from looking at the photograph? Take a moment to think. So you might have looked at this photograph and thought, huh, I can see the slimy mucus trail that the snail is leaving behind it. So you might say that from this photograph, I can learn that you can see the mucus trail that snails leave behind when they move. So you can learn lots of things from photographs. All right, now we're gonna take a look at another page, see what we can learn about photographs from that one. All right, this one right here, you might remember this chapter. It is called Looking for Snails. It says, snails live in gardens. You might find some in a flower pot. You might find snails in some leaves. So after looking at these photographs from this chapter, my question for you is this. What can you find out about snails' habitats from looking at these photographs? Hmm. 
So if you're like me, you might have noticed some details because photographs are very detailed and you might see, huh, it looks like the snails are on top of some leaves. So I think in their habitat, they probably have leaves around them. That's something you can learn just from looking at the photograph right here. Awesome. All right, we're gonna take a look on page 16, which is the next chapter. Um, this goes on to new snails. So in the new snails section chapter right here, um, we learned that new snails hatch from round white eggs. Baby snails are very small. They have soft shells and bodies. And then we even have right here a photograph. But this photograph has something a little bit different on it. What it has right here is a label. So this label, it says eggs. And then if you look at the picture, you can see there's actually some eggs in the picture. So the label tells us more information about the photograph. So really, when nonfiction authors decide to add labels to their photographs, they're trying to give the reader more information about the photograph so that they can learn more from the book. So today we learned about two new text features. We're gonna add our two new text features that we learned to our nonfiction text feature list. So let's take a look. Last time we know that we added the table of contents and chapter titles, and today we are going to add photographs and labels for photographs. All right, let's move on to our next section. All right, in this next section, um, we are going to talk about something that we really didn't get to look at last time we were together, and that is the glossary. The glossary is usually in the very back of a book, um, and you can find it right here in our book about snails. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the glossary, and then we're gonna dive into it. So a glossary, we can see right here, is a list of words from the book that the author defines. And when an author defines something, that means that they explain it. They tell you more about what it means. And they do that all for the reader. So the words you'll notice in our glossary are actually in alphabetical order. That means they're in ABC order, right? And I'm gonna show you how you might use the glossary because you might think, well, it just lives back here. But actually, nonfiction authors do something really cool to help you use the glossary. So let's say you're reading along in your book and you come to a word like this. Bam! On page 22, I'm reading it, and I see right here, oh my gosh, it says, they go inside their shells and close them with mucus. And I can see, oh, the word mucus is bold. When you see a bold word like this, that's a clue. That tells you that the word is actually in the glossary. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look and see, okay, mucus, it starts with an M. I'm gonna look in the glossary for that word. Let's see if we can find it. And the glossary is at the back of the book, so you just flip back and see. All right, let's see, it starts with F, A, aha, it's right here, it starts with an M. And it, the word is mucus, and it tells us what the word means, it defines the word. It says, mucus, slimy liquid a snail makes to help it move. So you can see that an author uses a glossary to define important words throughout the book. So you can use glossaries in all kinds of books when you come to words that are bold, that you don't know what they mean. Let's add that to our text feature chart. All right, we're gonna add bolded words and we are going to add glossary because those are two things that are text features that you can find in expository nonfiction books like snails. All right, we've got another text feature to take a look at today, which is also usually in the back of the book, which is the index. The index in this book is right below the glossary and the index um, is right here. It says index at the top. And you can also, if you have the packet, you can look at it. There's a chart in your packet with the index. But if you don't have it, it's okay. I'm gonna show it to you right here. Um, so the index is in the back of a book and it usually comes up in nonfiction books. And it's a place that you can find specific information about topics in a book. So if you're looking for something specific in a book, you can flip to the index and see, is it in the book? So what you can do is you can see it's a list of topics and the list is also in alphabetical order like a glossary, but this list actually does not 
define words like a glossary. Instead, this list just tells you where to find it in the book. So I'm going to read the index to you so you can hear what kinds of words are in there, and then we're going to practice using it. All right, the first one, it says eggs on page 16, eyes on page 11, foam is page 21, food you can find on 18 and 19, there's two pages, foot you can find on 8 and 9, gardens, 14 and page 19, hibernate, page 22, leaves, 15 and 18, mucus, 13 and 22, shell, this is on a lot of pages, 4, 5, 9, 17, 20, and 22, so that means it's on lots of pages, tentacles is on page 10 and 11, and winter you can find on page 22. So you can see the index has lots of specific information. Um, so we are actually going to practice using it. Um, right now, I'm looking at this list, and after I read it, I thought, who? I am really interested in learning about, let's see, foam. So let's take a look. What you're going to do to use an index is you're going to find the word you're looking for. I chose foam. And then you're going to go along all those dot, 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 all the way to the end. And it says 21. That's the page number that you want to turn to. So I'm going to look in my book. Page 21. Let's see. Here's 22. And here is 21. Aha. And on this page, I can see right here, it says, Snails make foam too. From, or foam keeps snails safe from predators. And it even has a label on the photograph that tells us what the foam looks like so we can see it. So you can see I was interested in the word foam, so I used the index to find the page number and then flipped that page to find more information. So that is an excellent text feature. All right, we are going to add that to our text feature chart. So right up here, let's put it up there. We're going to add index. Index is another great text feature that you can use when you are looking in an expository nonfiction book, just like snails. All right, welcome to our review part of the day. Today, we are going to look at two vocab words, but first we're gonna review what we learned last time. Last time, if you remember, we learned variety, which means many different kinds. And we also learned our vocabulary word characteristic, which is something that describes a person or a thing with lots of details. So today we're going to dive into our next vocab words from the famous and wonderful book, Snails. All right, the very first word we're going to look at um, is from a chapter you might remember. It's from the chapter all about what snails eat. So in this chapter, we saw there were some interesting photographs, but we also learned some interesting information. So let's go back and review just to remind you what it was that we learned. So this chapter is called Food for Snails, and we learned that snails eat the leaves and flowers of dead plants. So the first vocab word I am going to teach you today is about this page, and that word is consume. Can you say that word with me? Ready? Consume. So the word consume means to eat or drink. So we can see on this page, we learn that snails consume leaves and flowers of dead plants. So there's something we learn. We can use the word consume means to eat or drink. So I have a question for you. My question for you is about what you consume. What did you consume or eat for breakfast today? a moment to think and you can use the sentence prompt up here to answer that question. What did you consume for breakfast today? For breakfast I consumed hmm. All right, are you ready? I'm going to tell you. For breakfast today I consumed some oatmeal. So now we have our word consume. We're going to move on to our second word today, which actually comes from the very same chapter. So in our chapter about food for snails, um, we read on the second page of that chapter that they eat growing plants too. Snails can be garden pests. Hmm. And that page tells us more about what our second vocab word today is, which is unwelcome. The word unwelcome is our second 
vocab word today. Can you say it with me? The word is unwelcome. Awesome. So you probably remember the word welcome from a previous lesson that you did about the word welcome. Unwelcome, you can see, has the word welcome inside of it. And if you remember that lesson, you know that welcome means wanted. So if something is unwelcome, that means it's not welcome. So that means that it's not wanted. So when we learned about snails eating live plants and that sometimes they're pests, that means that sometimes snails are unwelcome. It's true. So now I'm gonna give you some scenarios and you're going to tell me if you think they are welcome, which means they're wanted, or they're unwelcome, which means it's not wanted. All right, I want you to imagine right now, are you ready? You are about to have the best picnic of your life. You have all your favorite foods, maybe all your favorite friends are there and we're in the park and it's a wonderful, wonderful day for a picnic and everyone is so excited and we're walking up to the picnic and all of a sudden we look up, it's raining. Is the rain welcome at your picnic or is the rain unwelcome at your picnic? Use this prompt to help you answer. The rain is welcome at the picnic because, or the rain is unwelcome at the picnic because. Hmm. I bet a lot of you are like me that when it's raining, you're not so happy about it. So I would say that the rain is unwelcome at the picnic, right? All right, so now that we've got our two new vocabulary words today, we've got unwelcome and we had consume. We are ready to move on. All right, now that we have taken a look at all of the amazing text features in this book, we are going to do a little class discussion right now. Um, so my big question for you is after looking at the text features in this book, what new information have you learned about snails? Hmm. Maybe you're like me and you noticed there were some really juicy words in the glossary and maybe you came across the word hatch in the glossary because it says hatch means to come out of an egg. So right here we can find that in the glossary. Or maybe you remembered that we learned about labels in books, in photographs, and you found some amazing labels here in the chapter about snail tentacles, and you learned that this is where the eye tentacle is because of the label in the photograph. Text features can really help us learn a lot, so they are very helpful in teaching you when you are reading an expository nonfiction book like this. All right, I have another question for you. So what I want to ask, this is more of an opinion. My question for you is this, what do you think the most interesting text feature is? And you can take a look at our text feature chart right here to decide what do you think the most interesting text feature is? can be hard to choose. Text features are pretty amazing. For me, I really love photographs. I think that's a really cool part of nonfiction books that they have real photographs. Some of these photos of snails in here were mind blowing. I had never seen pictures of snails like I had in this book. So photographs can be an amazing text feature to take a look at. Maybe you had something different. All right, now we are going to add on to our reading comprehension chart. Now you might remember our reading comprehension chart because it's stuff that you have been learning all school year and you've been learning in these videos as well. So the reading comprehension chart is full of things that you do when you are reading independently and when you practice with your partners and with your teacher. So I'm gonna review some of the things that are already on the list that you have already practiced um, and we're gonna take a look right here at the reading comprehension list. So, so far on the reading comprehension list, you have been practicing using personal connections. Um, you have practiced making connections between stories. Um, you have practiced visualizing. 
right? Making that movie in your mind. Um, you have also practiced making inferences about characters, and you have also practiced looking at wondering, right? Wondering about what you're reading. And today, we're gonna add to that list because you have learned a new skill that you can keep in your toolbox when you're reading. The new thing that we're gonna add to the list is, da da da, it is using text features in a nonfiction book. So, when you are reading, you can come across text features and learn a little bit more as you read. So that's a great comprehension strategy to add to your list of amazing reading comprehension strategies that you've been practicing all along. Awesome. Now we have come to my favorite part of every reading lesson, which is when we finally get to read. That's the best part of reading lessons is we get to practice what we learned. So today when we are reading, we spend a lot of time looking at text features in our expository nonfiction book, and that is what you are going to do today during IDR. So what you need is an expository nonfiction book. What does that mean? That means you need a book that is nonfiction with true information in it. So it's not a story that tells you all these things. It's, it's true information, a lot like our snail book that we read today. So if you have those books at home, great. Pull out one of those and you're gonna read for at least 20 minutes. If you don't have a book at home, that's okay. You'll see there's links below with lots of different options to read. And you can find some really amazing nonfiction things to read online as well. So I am very excited because not only do you get to read, but I get to read. And I'm really excited because today I picked out a book um, that I've had for a very long time. I found it in my childhood bedroom. It is called How Children Lived, and it's a history book, and it's a nonfiction expository book. So get cozy. You're going to read for about 20 minutes today, probably longer because reading is awesome. I'm excited to dive into my book, How Children Lived. Have a wonderful time reading, and I will see you again with another lesson. <laughs>